we go. Good evening and welcome to a regularly scheduled meeting of the City of Hartford Common Council. All proper notices were sent. I'd like to call this meeting to order and ask if you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Roll call, Lori. The mayor and all older persons are present except older persons Webb and Kohler who are absent and excused. Thank you. We have before us the unanimous consent agenda uh, by President Heggie to approve, uh, second by older person Turchi. Motion by older person Hagee, seconded by older person Turchi, approving the Common Council minutes of January 24th, 2023 and authorizing a transient merchant license to Keith Harvey for the Window Store Incorporated for the period February 15th, 2023 to February 14th of 2024. Any comments, questions, additions, subtractions? Hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. Thank you. Communications, Lori. I do have one thing this evening, just a reminder that next week, Friday, is the Fireman's Banquet. If anyone is interested in going, we do need those reservations by tomorrow. So if you could let either myself know after the meeting tonight or tomorrow morning, that would be great. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, in the mayor's report, just wanted to make a special note of the passing of Richard Wett, uh, former mayor of the city of Hartford. Uh, Richard Dick Wett, uh, age 81 of Hartford, he passed on Thursday, February 9th uh, at the Virginia Highlands Nursing Home in Germantown, Wisconsin. Uh, Dick served one term as mayor. Uh, he also served as the police and fire commissioner of Hartford for 30 years. So a long uh, service record uh, for uh, Richard Witt. He uh, had a long career in industrial sales across manufacturing and previous employment with Dynex and Sunstrand. He was also a private pilot who enjoyed flying his plane up north for fishing, hunting, and golf. He is preceded in death by his beloved wife Kathleen uh, May Son, son Timothy Witt, and sister Gloria uh, Weber. He is survived by his sons Ronald Witt of Milwaukee, Kevin uh, of Campbellsport, Grandsons Alex Witt of Smyrna, Georgia, Taylor Witt of Oshkosh, and great grandson Benjamin Witt. In addition, he is survived by his three brothers, Gene of Fox Point, Wisconsin, Tom of McGuanago, Wisconsin, and David uh, Witt of Hampton, New Jersey. Just so you are aware, there is a memorial service that will be available held on Thursday. That's the uh, day after tomorrow, February 16th, 2023, at 2 p.m. at the Shimon Funeral Home. Uh, 824 Union Street. His family will greet friends and relatives at the funeral home for visitation at 1 p.m. until the start of the service. So may God uh, have him rest in peace and we thank Richard for his many years of service to the city of Hartford. With that, we will have uh, the aldermanic requests. President Hagee. Okay, uh, the Mid-Marine Legislative Committee met last Wednesday night at uh, the village of Jackson Hall and the topic of discussion was the relationship between uh, library boards and uh, city councils uh, as to how they work together. And uh, obviously the city council would uh, provide the funding and support and uh, the library board uh, authorized, uh, well we authorize the budget and the library board oversees it. And uh, it can get to be a complicated relationship because uh, the board is direct is appointed by the mayor and if things are happening that uh, um, are in conflict well then the purse strings become a problem so but uh, our own library director was in attendance and there were quite a few directors there from the, the area I think from every library in the mid Moraine was represented and they all made contributions. It was a pretty good discussion and uh, it helps to clarify how we work together. There are limits both ways. So one side can't just uh, do whatever they want and uh, put their thumb in the eye of the other side. 
So we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Thank you. Alderperson Rosniak. I have nothing tonight, Mayor. Alderperson Carroll. Nothing tonight, Mayor. Alderperson Garza. Nothing tonight, Mayor. Alderperson Turchi. Nothing tonight, Mayor. Alderperson Sakura. Nothing tonight, Mayor. Alderperson Fulop. Nothing tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, aldermanic requests. Any alderman wishing to identify any pertinent information may do so. I think I just went through that. Yes. You can read that. So <laughs> okay. I'm still in a food coma. I took my beautiful bride out to Valentine's Day dinner at the Wasada Chop House. And I had their porter house. And it was an incredible feast. So, uh, yeah, the, the uh, definitely still still swooning back and forth. No alcoholic beverages, though. But uh, it, uh, have a, a great meal there. Uh, they truly are a treasure if you're looking for something fancy. Not that we don't have other great restaurants, but the Wasada Chop House for special occasions does do a wonderful job. So uh, that's what I'm suffering from in my food coma here. Uh, standing committee reports, finance and personnel, Chairman Rosniak. One item tonight, discussion and consideration of authorizing appropriate city officials to purchase two 2023 Ford Police Interceptor Utility Hybrid Squads from Ewald Automotive Group for a price not to exceed $45,199 per vehicle. Chief McFarlane? It's probably a typo. I think that should probably say Teslas. We're going to get Teslas, <laughs> right? Tesla? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, the Finance Personnel and Common Council approved our CIP for 2023, and in it, it included two replacement squads. This year was the first year we were supposed to get two hybrids. Uh, we ordered them last year with permission uh, in February of 2022. In January of this year, our order was canceled. And so we were scrambling to try and find something. We worked out something with Ewald who eventually told us that they did have some fleet vehicles that were coming in and they would put our name on two of them. Uh, and they were pretty, pretty assured that those vehicles would be built and they would receive them. The ones that we had ordered were not going to be built. Everything was over ordered. <clears throat> and as I had explained earlier, we couldn't even get into the 2023 buying uh, for new vehicles to replace the ones that were canceled on us. Uh, so they spec'd us out two of their fleet vehicles. Uh, we're waiting on those to be built, but we're pretty certain that they will. I don't know when we will receive those, but we have all the equipment for them now uh, waiting to go in. Uh, those vehicles are exactly like the ones we were going to order, only they're hybrids. And they are, uh, they, they were hybrids before, I apologize. They're exactly like the ones we were ordering before. However, they're more expensive, of course, because we're a year down the road. So they're $3,571 per vehicle uh, in excess of our expenditure, uh, totaling 7142 on the two squads uh, to purchase. I, I'm not exactly certain what our loss on revenue is going to be at auction because we don't know when these ones are going to be built and when we can actually make that turnover. Uh, but I guess at this point, we're just looking for authorization to purchase the two squads uh, for a price not to exceed $45,199 per vehicle. Uh, billing and receiving, cross your fingers, will be this year. Uh, we've already waited a year, so hopefully it'll be this year. All right. Questions or comments for the chief? Jeff? Um, the two vehicles that we're replacing, how old are they now? What's the, what's the rotation three, again? Uh, they're three, well, they're, it's three years now. It used to be two years, and they're going into, so these, these squads are two going into three years. So this will be the third <laughs> year for both of these vehicles? It, it will be. I'd have to look exactly at the year that we purchased them. They might be 2019s. So they might be going into their fourth year. They're going in their. I'm pretty certain. I'm pretty certain they might be going into their fourth. Well, there you go. yeah. I think they're going into their fourth year. So this will be their fourth. So this year. was we were supposed to replace these now in the three-year cycle. So they're going into their fourth year. How many miles are on both of these vehicles? Approximately seventy-five to eighty thousand between the two. One has seventy some, and one has eighty. Okay. So when was the last time we did a study and figured out when we should actually start rotating vehicles again? I mean, I understand that we went sure. from two to three. Mm -hmm. We only got 70,000 on these things. They're in the year four. What are we doing? So, so right, right when's, the next, when's the next time we're going to do a study? Go, go ahead. Uh, again, in police vehicles are different than your vehicle. Um, it has nothing to do with the miles. So throw that 
statistic out the door. It's, our, it's engine hours. The engine hours on these are 24 hours a day, seven days a week for two and a half, three, three and a half years. So that's, uh, we do continually look at um, how many miles we have on it, how many hours we have on it, how much the, uh, the costs of the gasoline are, our maintenance costs, things like that. So this is the third group of um, our two year cycles that went that are going to three now. So this is the, the, the third group. Um, so once that is done, so once we've gotten three full vehicles, so once these come off the road, we can take a look at what the difference has been from going from two to three years. I, don't yeah, think that, I guess that's really what I'm looking for. The answer is is, to answer your question, yes, we're always looking at that. I have the numbers for the two-year cycle, and we're not fully through and in, in, into the three-year cycle for all of our fleet. But once we are and we start rotating those three-year cars out, then we'll have more information. And then these cars being hybrids versus gas are, are going to give us some additional information on what cost savings there might be uh, as it relates to that end of things, which we mm -hmm. anticipate there will be. I just don't know how much to quantify that at this point. The other thing to look at too is what, what kind of money we can get back on these this third set of, of co vehicles. Um, we're seeing right now historically high um, trade-in value. We don't trade them in, but we, we sell them outright uh, on Wisconsin surplus, but we're seeing historic numbers right now on vehicles. Keep in mind, everybody's a little uncomfortable with this, but we're at the mercy of Ford Motor Company. They already canceled one order. Now we're hoping to get these two ordered and get those to get delivered in 2023. So it's a real catch-22 here. Jeff? No, I understand. I just want to make sure we're looking over the numbers, doing the analysis, and saying, okay, we went from two to three. How's that working out? And then after we do that, is it possible to go to four? <clears throat> what, what I've right? done I mean, so that's, that's the question. Where is that? break even where you want to actually start trading, I'm um, not trading in, but rotating them out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I discussed with the finance personnel committee that I do have spreadsheets on purchase costs, uh, the cost to auction it off. It has room in there for equipment, what our, what our equipment costs are, because it's approximately without computers and some of the radars and things that we do move over on a five-year cycle, it's easily just over $10,000 for the equipment to put in the car. That's outside of this cost that we're talking about tonight. Uh, but all that is in a spreadsheet, and so I can go back and I can look and see what those costs are over time. And all the squads that we're purchasing now in the three-year cycle are also included in there. So we know our purchase price. We know what uh, there might be for certain uh, costs for repair that fall outside the warranty, because we do have warranties on the cars, and I've I've chosen to purchase additional warranty, and it's proven very good because we've had warranty repairs uh, under those new warranties. And so, yes, that is something we're always looking at and exploring. Uh, we talked earlier as well about a potential to look at leasing again. We did look at it at one point, and there are some law enforcement agencies that do it. I couldn't tell you whether it would save us anything or not right now without looking at it again, uh, but it's something that uh, a city administrator and I have talked about in the past. and. Uh, is, is another option out there. I think we're always, it's, it's safe to say that we're always looking at ways to reduce our costs in that area because the vehicles are, are expensive, yeah. Any other questions or comments, Mayor? Just a comment, uh, Chief, you and I talked about this uh, a while ago going three years, 14 years ago when I ran for the city council, one of the things that I pushed was I had contacted a number of uh, uh, police departments, counties, and uh, I don't recall that I could find another one that rotated them every two years. Three was there, four, a number of them. Uh, but uh, <laughs> we, as a council, for some strange reason, decided to go for two. They claimed that it was a, a thing as far as the trade-in value. I think what the uh, city administrator, Steve Boker, just brought up is probably one of the things that helped move it is, is pre-owned vehicles, especially if they're treated well, and I'm sure ours are uh, uh, treated well, is that uh, because we get a historically high trade-in or sale value, it makes it much more well, because I, I always mm -hmm. thought that three years would have been a way to go. So I, I commend you for doing this, because I had pushed on a couple of different occasions to get it to three, so thank you very much for picking that up. I do think it will save the city money and not changing the vehicles out every two years. Uh, plus, they don't change as much, which is an interesting sure. thing to the vehicles themselves. So thank you for that. And I think to add to that, three years from now, when we trade in those, we'll put the hybrids up at the auction to get our, our new 
um, fleet going, we're going to get bigger dollars for the hybrids than we would for the gas engine. I would so it might pay yeah. off in the long run. Yeah, I would, I would say that's probably true, yeah. Sure. Anyone else? Not back to you, Mayor. Thank you very much. We look for a motion to approve uh, the uh, vehicles for the 2 Ford 2023 Ford Police Interceptor Utility Hybrid <laughs> Squads. Uh, Alder Person Phillips, second by Alder Person Turchin. Motion by Alder Person Phillips, seconded by Alder Person Turchi. Authorizing appropriate city officials to purchase two 2023 Ford Police Interceptor Utility Hybrid Squads from Ewald Automotive Group for a price not to exceed $45,199 per vehicle. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those no. Motion carried. I did want to go back. Uh, because when I jumped and uh, uh, asked for aldermanic requests twice, what I did miss was the appearances or citizens' comments. Anybody wishing to come up and address the city council, just state your name, your city address, and you get three glorious minutes. Second request, third request. Hearing none, we will go on to utility. Chairman Turchi. Thank you, Mayor. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody, and now we can go. All right, uh, so item up for discussion and consideration is entering in an agreement f to provide after our dispatch services. Yeah, good evening. So the utility is proposing to use a third party dispatch service for our utility emergencies and after hours phone calls. Uh, for some of our larger power outages over the last few years, both the uh, police and fire chief have expressed their concerns over the uh, increase in phone call volume at the dispatch center. Um, estimated phone call volume for large scale outages can range between 150 to 200 calls for one event. So uh, with more customers using the dispatch center for utility emergencies, the concern is that uh, dispatchers won't be available to address um, some of the more serious events that occur at, at that same time. I reached out to a number of utility managers throughout the state to find out how they're handling dispatch services in their communities. Uh, it's pretty evenly split. Some are using dispatch services that are in there locally, and in some are using third, part, third party vendors. And more of the uh, larger utilities are using the third party vendors. Um, so I requested quotes from three different vendors, uh, Answer, Answering Innovations, and Integrated uh, Communication Services. They all have electric experience. Um, Answering Innovations provided a quote with the lowest rates. Uh, they have a plan for 100 minutes a month for at $130. Um, it seems to be a plan that works out really well for the utility. Uh, we have an option to move up or down in that plan if we need to. Um, we're very familiar with answering innovations. They do the dispatching services for the village of Slinger. Uh, spoke to Jim Haggerty, the village uh, engineer, and he had a lot of uh, positive things to say about them and recommends using them in the, for, for us. So um, based on our call history, um, we're projecting that our annual expense would be about uh, less than $2,000 a year. So, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, it would be, our annual expense would be less than $2,000 per year. So um, this was presented to the utility committee last Monday and it was uh, approved unanimously. All right, thank you. Any questions, comments? Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, how, how, do, how does that logistically work, right? So somebody gives a call to the police center and then they redirect it or do we give a different number for the people that have outages and have concerns. We would have to market a brand new number to our customers. So our customers would be given a new number to call and the, they would dispatch out our linemen or our water operators from that point. So the dispatch center would not be used. I'm a little confused, maybe it's just <laughs> my understanding. So right now they're calling the police station for issues? Correct. And you're saying we're going to post a new number and then they're not going to call the police station? Correct. That's the concept. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can't tell, you know. Yeah, I know. If, so, but if what, someone's what, what, 250 years old, for 250 years they've been calling the police station, <laughs> guess what they're going to do? They're going to call the police station. M most will, and that's my point. So do we have a quick redirect so they call the police station and they say, hey, this is a call that goes to the call center. We click a button and it automatically forwards it to them, or we tell them, hey, this is the number you need to call. We're not going to service you at this particular event. Second one? Second one. Got it. Thanks. <laughs> Just wanted clarity on that. Mr. Rosniak. 
What's the funding source on this? Water and electric revenues coming out of your budget? Correct, split evenly between water and electric. Okay. Are we going to put out a flyer explaining it so that people do? Um, by yes. the time we get done, the, the uh, refrigerators are going to be covered with posters. Yeah, <laughs> th that's kind of the idea is we'll do a little bit of marketing and planning here. We'll get some, um, maybe some magnets that people can okay. hand out at the rec center or library or wherever it might be. And we have to put some things on our website that promote the new number. What number are they going to call? What's the magic number? The magic has not been determined yet. <laughs> not been determined yet? Okay. Five, five, five. <laughs> any, any others? Mayor? Thank you. Uh, no, I, I just want to make sure that I'm understanding this. So we, we put a contract out, or you had three people that you contacted, and this is only going to cost us $2,000 a year to handle these calls? Correct. Okay. How many power outages do we have that generate calls? We're at 150 on average. What, what are we looking at? We're estimating that you might get about 80 minutes worth of calls every month for general smaller okay. outages, smaller water breaks, the calls that we can track that's what we're projecting. Um, so that's why the plan for 100 minutes a month seems to work out well. Okay. Um, if we do have a larger power outage, that's obviously going to generate a lot more calls. Um, so it'll be, our costs will go up a little bit at that point. But Okay. Um, but then I'm also interested in the, uh, uh, the other members of the WPPI. I believe that Slinger, Kewaskam, and Jackson, if I'm not mistaken. What, uh, did you contact those cities and see how they're handling their calls? No. I... I through MEUW, the Municipal Electric Utilities of Wisconsin, I contacted them. They did a survey, and they, they presented all the data back to me on the number of utilities that were using local dispatching services or third-party vendors, and that's where I got the contact information from. So all WPPI members are part of, w, are part of MEUW. Okay. So I, got, I have a lot of information from... Understood. I'm just interested in, in these are three of the communities that have uh, dispatch to the county rather than the, the three municipalities in Washington County that have it as a separate entity uh, within their police force. And I was wondering how they were handling the calls for a power outage. I'd still, even beyond this, <coughs> would like you to come back at our next meeting and, and let me know that, if you could please. I mean, uh, I'm not voting here, and, and I'm assuming that this will pass. Uh, how long of a contract do we have? I think it can go month to month. Oh, I, I think it's very short. What's well, $2,000 a year, though, you said, right? It's a hundred. It's $130 a month. Okay. Well, that's obviously very affordable. But I, what I want to do is I didn't want to lock ourselves into a long-term contract, and I wanted to see what those, specifically, the, what those three communities are doing for power, power outages and how they're handling them, uh, how the folks, uh, if they have a separate call, if they have a service, or if they indeed have okay. uh, uh, sending it to their police departments. But so Kewaskam and what was the other community? Kewaskam, Jackson, Slinger. So Jackson and Kewaskam are through We Energies. They don't have their own. Yeah, that, that's what their own good. utility. So only Slinger is relevant with what your question is. Okay. And then I know how Slinger works because we deal with them. Sounds like a plan. Thank you. You're welcome. One more. One more. So where's this service based out of? They're based out of Madison. Please don't tell me India, okay? No, <laughs> no it, and that was one of the questions I asked them. Is, Madison? You know, what, what type of... Uh, they have an office above the barber shop in town. What, <laughs> what, who's gonna be, what, type, what type of operators are going to be answering the questions? Um, they guaranteed that they have operators that uh, can speak Spanish. Oh. Not all of them will, um, but they're based out of their home headquarters is Madison, Wisconsin. Okay. They have, they're a nationwide company, um, with, which extends into Canada just a little bit, so. Thank you. Back to you, Mayor. Thank you, Chairman Turchi. With that, we would look for a motion uh, to approve an agreement with Answering Innovations for After Hours Dispatch Services for Hartford Electric and Water Utility. Uh, Move to approve. We'll move to approve for uh, Alderperson Carroll, second by President Hagee. Motion by Alderperson Carroll, seconded by Alderperson Hagee to approve entering into an agreement with Answering Innovations to provide after hours dispatch services for Hartford Electric and Water Utility. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those no. Motion carried, thank you. One other item besides our adjournment is uh, for ordinance, the uh, first reading on ordinance number 1467, an ordinance amending sections 340.0002, 340.0002, 340.0001, 340.0003, 340.0004, 340.0005, 340.0006, 340.0007, 340.0008, 340.0009, 340.0010, 340.0011, 340.0012, 340.0013, 340.0013, 
Oh my gosh, sub one, sub A, sub one, sub B. <laughs> <laughs> Man, sub we, we know what it is. Of the mm -hmm. municipal code relating to speed limits. Waiting for me. I am waiting for you. Uh, good evening. Right. It's a, a little bit of a house cleaning is what we're looking at doing here. Uh, we'll start with Lee Road from Cedar Street to Highway 83 South. Uh, the, as you come into the town from the golf course side, their speed limit is 30. If you come in uh, from Highway 83 South and go to the west, our, the city speed limit is 35. Um, we did get a request from a citizen along that road to take a look at it. Um, first of all, I, I'd never even realized there was two different speeds on that road, one for one side of the road, one for the other. But working with the city engineering, uh, the police department, we looked at it and we did decide that with the residents along there, some of them are town of Hartford and some of them are now city of Hartford, that we should be in the same speed limits as 30 miles an hour through that area. We saw a picture of the traffic jam I saw there that demonstrated with all the gazelles running through there. And yeah, right. Most, a bunch of smiling faces. <laughs> if you were like that, that's why, because there was just a wildlife picture there while you were going, so interesting. So that's Lee Road, and again, uh, just to be in uniform with the town, but uh, the 30 mile an hour speed limit through there, uh, working with Scott and his uh, uh, officers and, and John, we really think that is the the legitimate speed that should be through there. Thank you. And the other one is uh, with North Main Street from Settlement Road to East Rossman Street. Many years ago, um, and I'm probably dating myself here, uh, there was never any kind of East Prospect uh, at all. There was no Hidden Creek view and there was no Borland Farm, so the speed limit was always 30 miles an hour all the way up to East Rossman Street. With all the residents, there's actually 22 residents on the east side of the road, and there's 16 residents on the west side of the road that do have the 30 mile an hour speed limit, and it goes through two intersections, East Prospect, and it goes through uh, Hidden Hill, uh, Hidden Creek, and also Peace Lutheran, and we need to reduce the speed from there from 30 miles an hour down to 25. We've also made that the truck route going out of the city to the north, so again, keeping the speeds down there and safer is, I think, something we should be doing. I have to ask, because I drive that stretch every day, and I like that little bump to 30 miles an hour, uh, getting home just a little bit. I have never seen, in my almost 20 years here, an accident on that stretch. Are, are we doing this because it's a box check, or are we doing this because there, are, there actually have been accidents, near misses, pedestrians complaining that cars are roaring by at 30 miles an hour, or are we just doing this to do this? We've actually had a few uh, re requests for truck traffic going through there, but we did get a request from a citizen that's saying the traffic's going through there pretty fast. Um, so when we did look it up, you, you really shouldn't have a speed limit at, at East Rossman Street dropping from 30 to 25, and that's mid-block of all the residents through there. Uh, we should have the 25 uniform all the way up to where it begins. Um, once we start with the 35 speed limit going out of the city from settlement to the north, um, there is one driveway and that'd be Gene Dietenberg out there and then the, the, uh, our city roads going in and out, but we should be, with all the residents through there, it should be 25. It, and, and again, I go, if, if there were a concern other than one citizen that, that makes it things, and the concern about trucks, which might very well have been speeding, and had they gone 30 and actually had the speed limit, so we could put a, a, a radar mm -hmm. thing there. My personal thing is to leave it alone, but you guys get the vote on that particular one. The other one I agree with, but on this mm -hmm. one, I just think it's silly. Speeding, I, speed limits have nothing to do with accidents. Speed limits have to do with stoppage signs have to do with accidents, or stopping signals have to do with accidents. Speed has to do with the amount of pedestrian traffic that could be in that area, including crosswalks, which you have two of them, and also the amount of pedestrians that come out onto the street. So because we have grown out into that area, it's a natural situation of taking it down to 25. Yes? I agree 100% with that. The question I have is that when does it flip from 25 to 35, right? When did you say it, it moves as you're going north, right, going right. north out of town? Right now, as you're getting into Settlement Road, as you're coming from the north, traveling to the south, just past Settlement, about 250 feet to the south, it is 30 miles an hour right now. We're going to start at 25 right there because that's um, 
where the residents start and, and all the crossroads. So all that we're doing is dropping the speed limit five mile an hour all the way through there. And then once you get to settlement and you go to the north, it'll be 35. So, so we're going to go from 25 to 35, which is legit because there's no driveways or pedestrians along your living road quarters. So my question, all right, so I'm just trying to figure out, so the in and out out of Borland Farms. The yes, two that'll be 35. And, that's going to be 35, and then it reduces as we get closer, as we get closer in. Into the city, settlement, the city. past settlement road, it'll go down to 25, all the, all the way through to downtown. Okay. So it's okay to go from 35 to 25. Yes. That's that's reasonable. And there's no residence where that 35 is, and that's why it's, it yeah. it makes it logi yeah. logistically wise. Okay. Yeah, I'm just concerned about as that subdivision is more and more occupied as you come down the hill, coming from the north to the south. I that already, that okay. speed becomes more and more of a potential issue. I have talked to the police. We will put one of those flashy signs up so that people get quite used to it for quite some time. But again, it's, it's even uh, Prospect, uh, you got Peace Lutheran School there. You got a lot of, you know, and, and you say there's never been an accident. Uh, we're trying to keep it from happening also, though, I guess. No, I, so. no, I mean that. I mean, you're, 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 oh, right. it's, it's five you, miles an hour. Yeah, here, right? yeah I, I, like, please, man. 45 to 25. I thought I had the floor, Mayor. Sorry. Mm -hmm. so. um, please keep in mind, too, is that these are all DOT standards. Yeah. We're not picking and choosing out of a hat. It's literally, when you have an urbanized area, you go to 25 miles per hour. That's what I thought. And I was just concerned about that section and by there. So if we're, if we're good with that, then I'm good. Thank you. I'm putting that into your spiel next time, then, of uh, the DOT standards stating them and, and doing that rather than having to pull it out of you. Okay. We'd have Anybody a lot else? of spiel to do then. Yeah. <laughs> There'd be a lot. I see, I see the chief back there. Can we get one of those happy signs that says, hey, if they're compliant, it says thank you, rather than just the signal limit, right? And get the one that that flashes red when they go over the speed limit, right? Get, give them some positive reinforcement so they comply, right? We do get a lot of citizen input on recommendations. On They think every city, every road should be a stop sign at every intersection. We, we do get a lot. Um, and, and we do look them all over. We go through them. I go through with the, the city engineer gets a lot of the complaints between the, the chief and his crew and myself. And we bring them all to Steve, all the concerns, and we try answering all of them. Some of them are just not logical, but this one really is. And I do feel it, it should be. That road's pretty wild. I drive it all the time. Yeah. yeah. There's guys doing 40, 50 down that stretch. Yeah, well, and if that's the case, then give them a ticket. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. Alrighty. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Uh, would look for uh, to, if you if you'd like to move this ahead right away, or we can have a second reading. What would you like to do? Motion to suspend the rules. Suspend the rules. All the person Sakura. Second by all the person Fulop. I'm sorry. Who was it? Uh, Sakura Fulop. Motion by Alder Person. Sakura seconded by Alder Person. Fulop to suspend the rules for immediate consideration of proposed ordinance 1467. For suspension, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. Okay, do we have a motion to, okay, Alder Person Garza, Alder Person Fulop. Motion to by approve. Alder Person. To approve. Right. Garza seconded by Alder Person. Full up for the adoption of proposed ordinance 1467. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those no. Motion carried for adjournment. Alder Person Sakura, second by Alder Person Carroll. Motion by Alder Person Sakura, seconded by Alder Person Carroll for adjournment at 735. All those in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those no, we stand adjourned. Thank you.